Hey guys, I'm Kobe Dev, and today you're watching a 2D character movement tutorial for just a top-down game that's really smooth, really simple, and really easy to do. So without further ado, let's get into it. So yeah, the first thing you want to do, you want to add your character body 2D node, obviously as the root node of your player scene, whatever it may be, and then uh, a sprite node. So the sprite node basically is just going to be a picture of whatever you want. I cannot be bothered to make my own one, so I'm just using the default one, but obviously you would change it in your case. And then next up, we want to add a collision shape 2D. So you want to set this to roughly the same size as your sprite. And then last but not least, we're going to add a camera 2D. So this camera, basically you can see the pink line as the viewable space around the player. So if you change the zoom to 0.5, it zooms out. And then if you change it to a higher value, it zooms in more. And now I just want to talk about positional smoothing. So basically, if you enable positional smoothing, it just basically means that the camera has a more natural style of movement. So when the player moves to the right, the camera doesn't like lock it onto it. It kind of lags behind, I guess you could say, and yeah, it's more of a natural looking movement. And then the speed here, you can adjust to uh, higher low or lower values depending on your preference. So now let's add a script. So we'll just name it player or whatever you want to name it. And it will come up with a bunch of this stuff. You're actually going to delete this because this is for this is not for top down movement. This is actually for side of movement. We want to create some constant. So our first constant is going to be speed. And I'm going to set that to 300. And then after that, we're going to create a acceleration constant. And we're going to set that to two. Cool. So after that, we're going to create a variable called input. This is going to handle all of our inputs um, in terms of key presses. And that's going to be a vector two. So you don't need to actually define what type it is. Uh, that's just good practice, I guess. First, we're going to create our function get input. So first, we're going to go input dot x equals input dot get action strength. So get action strength is good for analog as well as keyboard because get action strength, if you press a trigger or something, say halfway, the action strength will be 0 0.5. So the first one is going to be right or whatever your first key is that's going to be going right. For me, I haven't set up all the, pro uh, the project settings, so I'm just using the default your UI right, but you don't want to do this because this is basically just the arrow keys. So in project settings, I'll just show you how to add different ones. You go to project settings, then input map, and then you can add new actions. I'm just going to name it right and then add. Once you clicked on it, you click the plus key on the right. You can press whatever you want. So right, I'm going to press the D key. And then I'm going to also add the right arrow key and it adds it. And let's say we want to add, say, a joypad axis. So we want the right to be right stick right here. But yeah, you can add all of these. I'm not going to go through all of them as well, obviously. But if you want to make it also for keyboard and controller, then this is the way to go. So I'm just going to replace that with the right. So that's what you would do in your case, but I'm not going to do for every single one. And then we're going to go input dot get action strength and you guessed it, it's going to be left. All right. And then finally, I'm just going to duplicate this line because it's very similar, but instead of X, it's going to be Y and instead of right, it's actually going to be down. And then instead of the left here, it's going to be up. All right. And then finally, we're going to return the input dot normalized. This means that if you press down and right at the same time, you're not going to get that weird thing where the hypotenuse is bigger than both sides. It will return the normalized value and normalized just basically means unit vector of one or length of one. So no matter what you do, no matter what direction you're going, it's always going to be the same speed and there won't be any, you know, fast speed going diagonally. Anyways, in our process, we're going to set a variable called player input and it's going to be equal to get input. So whatever it's returning input normalize is going to be equal to player input. And after that, this is really simple. There's only two more lines of code. Velocity equals velocity. And then the second argument is going to be player input. So that's going to be our direction we want to go. And then times speed. So that's where our speed constant comes in. And then finally, our lerping value is going to be delta times acceleration. And then finally, to make sure everything works, we're just going to call it move and slide. And that's literally it that you need for a very simple top-down 2D character movement. And then you just put this in whatever your main scene is, and then bam, you've got it. So I'll just explain it really quickly before you go what lerp means if you don't understand. 
Lerp just is short for linear interpolation. And basically what it's doing is it's smoothing values. So the value is smoothing. The first argument is the value, the initial value. The second argument is the final value. And then this here is the smoothing amount. So if we increase this last argument, it means it's going to snap to the final value a lot faster. So if this is lower, you will see it lag behind more. Finally, let's just see what it looks like in our main scene. I'm going to save this as player. Also, I borrowed the actual background from another video. I'm sure you guys have seen it if you're, you know, regular viewers of the channel. But if you haven't, go check it out. It's really good. It's just procedural terrain generation like this. But as you can see, the actual movement of the player is very smooth. Uh, along with the camera smoothing, it just makes everything look really smooth. But yeah, that's all I'm going to be covering today. But yeah, hopefully you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one.